My passion in science is around the limits on life. Some of the big things that limit life are food, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water and temperature. One of the big things here in New Zealand is we have this group of fish that can tolerate large ranges of temperature, others really tolerant to changes in salinity, others really tolerant to, to changes in oxygen. And these fish are called triplefin fish and they rival Darwin's finches. In fact, Darwin's finches are a bit rubbish. There's about nine species of Darwin's finches and about 27 New Zealand triple fins. And they range from different depths, from subtidal where temperatures are constant and oxygen levels are nice and flush. And then there are rock pools where oxygen levels diminish down to almost absolute zero. And they've actually become super high to about 200 to almost 300%. Now these fish provide an awesome example. So an intertidal fish can survive temperatures that get up to maybe 28 degrees. One of the big things that's fascinated me is how do animals survive massive changes in temperature and high temperatures. And so for fish this is quite a big issue. Most animals actually die from heart failure when they get too hot. The question has been what actually drives heart failure? Some thought it was a lack of oxygen because there's less oxygen in warm waters. But we actually thought that maybe it was effects on the powerhouse of the cell within uh, the hearts of these animals. And that's the mitochondria. All complex life forms, in other words I mean animals uh, and plants, they have mitochondria within their cells. And the mitochondria is this ancient bacterial-like thing which invaded billions of years ago into a cell. And it takes sugars and fats and proteins or amino acids and breaks them down and releases ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, fundamental currency or money of life and they require oxygen to do this. So we explored how the mitochondria performed it at high temperatures and we invented ways of measuring this magical ATP. Um, and we found that there was a massive drop in ATP uh, production at specific temperatures. And these temperatures were always just below the temperature where hearts failed in fish. And we found that fish that say live in intertidal zones, their mitochondria were more robust at these temperatures. So there had been adaptation to the mitochondria and how it could adapt to, to, to elevated temperatures. And they were what we call less leaky and more efficient. As a mammal gets hotter, so we operate at about 37 degrees, as we go above that, we start to have trouble. And so it's fundamental to understand how this happens because when we have heat waves around the world, um, quite often the young, young babies and the elderly who have weaker hearts and impaired cardiac function compared to young adults, they tend to have heart failure and, and die from this. So it can provide insights and in, say, what organ to call first if someone is suffering from heat stroke. And so in reality, you would sort of think, well, maybe the heart. We know that the world is heating. We will suffer increased climatic events where we have high temperatures. So insights to how organisms such as ourselves or our crops or our, our, our animals that you know, we're farming, we have to understand how they're going to survive high temperature. But there's probably some more interesting things out there as well. So there are animals that actually tolerate real extremes in temperature. There are hydrothermal vent animals that can tolerate up to 70 degrees. Um, and there are little ants that can run across the deserts of the Sahara. So understanding how these animals do it may be actually at the core of understanding how life can survive on a planet and the thermal limits of life here or perhaps anywhere in the universe.